Should I learn supine PCNL? Well, the obvious answer for this is yes. We need to learn as many things as possible. Well, this was a talk in a recently concluded live operative workshop held at Hyderabad, conducted by Chandra Mohan Wadi. A famous quote by Steve Jobs says, Learn continually. There's always one more thing to learn. Is it necessary? It stirs the debate. Well, we have four prominent urologists from India who have collective experience of more than 30,000 PCNL and all of them are doing prone PCNL. Well, before I start, there's a disclaimer. I do both in a ratio of 80 to 20. A famous quote by Dr. Ravindra Sabnis, he says, prone and supine PCNL are just like left hand and right hand driving. Choose what suits you best. But why so much of Halla Gulla? Is supine the new buzz in the town? Well, the answer is no. Journey of PCNL started way back in 1976 by Funston and Johansson. But in the year 1988, Valdivia Urea started popularizing supine PCNL. But it gained momentum only in the year 2008 with the advent of ECIRS. So it's not a new budge in the town. Can supine be one-stop solution? My job was made easy by a recent poll conducted by Dr. Aditya Sharma on Facebook group Ulte, where he asked the audience, do you practice supine PCNL? We had good participants there, but only four accepted that they always do supine PCNL. So, this is not a one-stop solution. Let us analyze one by one. The position. Supine PCNL slightly scores over prone PCNL here. Supine PCNL definitely saves time as it does not require any change of position. The requirement of main power also decreases and it needs less padding of the pressure point, especially it doesn't need any padding for eyes and genitalia which are prone to get injured in prone PCNL. When it comes to anesthesia, for long we thought proning is not good for ventilation, but COVID changed it. Finally suitable both for supine as well as prone PCNL, but emergency can be handled much easily in supine PCNL as compared to prone. Fixation of endotracheal tube, displacement can happen in prone PCNL. Supine PCNL is also better suited for cardiac, poor respiratory reserve and skeletal deformity patients. If you see the ease of puncture, prone PCNL have multiple options as compared to supine. We can do by monoplanar, biplanar, triangulation or bullseye. In this so complex stone, stone needing multiple puncture where there is gross extravasation or diverticular stone probably are more suited for prone PCNL as compared to supine. The adaptability, it all depends on the technique which you are using. If you see here, people who are doing prone PCNL by freehand or triangulation technique can easily adapt supine PCNL as compared to as compared to Supine PCNL. This is another survey conducted in Facebook group full day. Calicial or anterior or posterior puncture. Probably the anterior calyx, uh, the lower calyx are more commonly punctured in supine PCNL as compared to prone. So the puncture most commonly can lie anterior to the broadal line in supine PCNL if you are doing anterior calicial puncture. When it comes to radiation, as the distance double, the radiation decreases by four times. Surgeon hand is more lateral in supine PCNL as compared to prone, but the difference in distance is very small. It needs further studies to establish the claim. Mobility of the kidney is more so in supine PCNL, but this can easily be circumvented by giving counterpression on abdomen. PCS gets emptied faster and remain collapsed in supine PCNL. This can impair the stone visibility and location, especially when there is grossly hydronephrotic kidney. Track length. Torque also depends on the track length. The tracks are longer in supine PCNL on right hand side by 2.6 cm and 1.8 cm on left hand side. 
longer fulcrum results in less mobility and maneuverability more torque also can leads to more bleeding when it comes to angle of axis axis can be safely obtained anywhere between the paraspinous muscle and the posterior border of liver spleen and colon in prontosnel this represent maximum axis angle larger the angle targeting the calis will give better margin of safety in prone pcnl there is more 17 degree more axis angle as compared to supine pcnl bleeding depends on expertise and the technique there is hardly any difference between both supine and prone pcnl in terms of hemoglobin drop or transfusion stone free rate better in prone pcnl if no ecirs is included this may be due to stone overlapping over the spine which can be missed in supine pcnl the distensibility of the pcs is also less especially in hydronephrotic kidney and maneuverability especially in upper calyx is less but when you can have a extra hand you should always take it when ecirs is combined with supine pcnl the stone clearance is almost equal to prone pcnl ecirs also helps in avoiding an extra puncture and can also result in better stone clearance retroinal colon incidence of colonic injury remains same more incidence of retroinal colon in prone pcnl that is 10% as compared to 1.9% in supine pcnl but the incidence of colonic perforation is very low is only 0.2% as compared to 10% incidence of retroinal colon visceral injury Lateral rotation of liver and spleen in prone pcnl can result in less incidence of visceral injury. Greater displacement of kidney quadrally in prone pcnl also improves upper pole axis. Supine pcnl can be easily done in sitting position, but at times it can lead to neck straining due to craning as the visual angle is not in line but is higher. When it comes to operative time, supine pcnl because it does not require change of position scores over prone pcnl as there is no turning of the patient it saves almost 15 minutes per procedure time saved is also money saved especially in corporate setup complication the musculoskeletal brachiocephalic neuropraxia ophthalmic and genitalia are more commonly seen in prone pcnl as compared to supine pcnl The incidence of bowel injury probably is same or maybe slightly higher as reported in prone pcnl. Hospital stay depends on institutional practice. We have published our data and most of our pcnl are discharged as day care. Coming to special circumstances where each of them are really useful. When it comes to bilateral stone prone pcnl can deal with them easily as it does not require change of position and we have wider access area to do the puncture as well when there are multiple calicial stone especially if the burden is small ecrs can help in preventing one more puncture supine pcnl can avoid an extra puncture with the help of ecrs but when the bulk is large we need one extra puncture and where prone pcnl can come handy so we need to decide based on the case where it can be used easily when it comes to diverticular stone is my personal feeling bull size is more easy to make the puncture as compared to other technique so i prefer bull size especially in diverticular stone as it is just like a mathematic and it can be done in prone pcnl easily as compared to supine when it comes to skeletal deformity both can be done easily may need ultrasound guided puncture to avoid bowel supine pcnl is more advantages from anesthetic point of view but in case if you need wider space especially in patient with skeletal deformity then probably prone can become more handy mal rotated or ectopic kidney all depends on the location transgluteal transverse access can be done in prone pcnl and laparoscopy can be avoided but in case if you have to do or combine with laparoscopy then supine is the only option comorbidities supine pcnl scores over prone pcnl here 
COPD patient, poor cardiac reserve patient are more suitable for supine PCNL as compared to prone PCNL. ECRS helps in better stone clearance and also helps in avoiding a extra puncture. Turning of the patient can be avoided. Here we can see a diverticular stone. Initially, we thought we can do a RIRS in this case, but we struggled as the angulation was not good and the same patient without turning a ECRS was done and procedure was completed in supine position without turning the position. But prone with the advent of novel flexi nephroscopy is also giving a tough competition. But this scope is not widely available and the use is limited but can do work similar to ECRS and also avoid access via curator thus avoiding uretric complications. Stagon stones. Difficult or complex stones are easier dealt with prone PCNL as it results in wider field. These are more suited and multiple techniques as I already mentioned can be applied here. Complex stones are easier dealt in prone PCNL as compared to supine. This again due to the wider space available and there are more than one ways to puncture. Upper calicial or ureteric stone. When major bulk of the stone is in upper calyx or ureter and is smaller in other calyx, probably prone can help in these cases as it requires less torque and easier to access. Obesity. Turning your obese patient is a nightmare. Supine PCNL is easier as known change of position is required. In obese female with supine PCNL, the movement of scope at times can get restricted because of the thigh and flank fold and it can make the puncture little more difficult. In case you have just started your career and you are stuck in mid of the case, you require a helping hand. Most of the seniors are well versed with prone PCNL as compared to supine and there are plenty of study which shows that 80% of the world is doing prone as compared to only 20%. So in case if you require a helping hand, probably prone is better. So in complex situation where you feel the situation can go out of hand, then do prone. But off late, the situation can change as more and more younger urologists are learning supine PCNL. So in coming years, probably we may have more supine PCNL surgeons or equal supine PCNL surgeons. When it comes to reproducibility, we can see robotic surgery is just two decades old and only one decade in India as compared to supine PCNL, which is almost three and a half decades. But still, only 20% of the PCNL surgeons are doing supine PCNL as compared to 90% of the prostate surgery is being done robotic worldwide. So probably it is not as easily reproducible as prone. That's why the world over is not adapting it easily. To conclude, there is no clear winner. Both have their own advantage and disadvantage. Majority of the stone can be dealt easily in supine PCNL. ECIRS adds to its advantage apart from the position and anesthetic advantage. Complex anatomy, multiple puncture, upper calicial axis, diverticular stone are better dealt by prone PCNL. So learn both. Use this judiciously to maximize your potential and result rather than being rigid. Ultimately, is the surgeon, not the position or equipments which decide the result most of the time. Thank you.